This section explains how to enter counts in the Drill Studio. The first step in creating a drill design is to enter the counts. To enter counts, use the count tool. The count tool has a number of features that are useful for entering counts. Even if you do not have a sound source for your music or do not need music, you may still need to enter a count. In that case, use add count by tempo to create a count. Here, the default value is left unchanged and a count of 500 is created at BPM 120. You can create a count all at once like this. Since this is an instructional video on creating counts, it is not necessary to explain how to input counts in accordance with the sound source. In order to explain how to input counts, we would like to delete the counts we have just created. To delete a count, select all counts. Click, select, select counts, select all counts. Then all counts will be selected. Click on the trash can icon here. You can also delete a count by pressing the delete key on your keyboard. Now, load the sound file. Click to File, Import Sound to load a sound file. Available file formats are MP3 or WAV. Only MP3 is available for iPad and Android devices. Use a file app, etc., to copy the file to the sound folder in the Drill Studio folder. By copying the file to the sound folder in the Drill Studio folder, it can be read by Drill Studio. In this case, select the MP3 file I have prepared in advance and load it. The waveform of the sound will appear below. Let's try to play it. Music is now playing. Now, let's enter the count. Counts can be entered in a variety of ways, but this time we will use the method of typing in the counts while playing the music. This time, we want to type in the count while the music is playing. Click on the second button from the left, count input mode. Click the start button and the program will play automatically. Enter the count using the space key on your keyboard or the tap button. Start. Enter the count by tapping the space key like this. It's okay if you make a mistake or the tempo goes a little off. It is easy to make mistakes during tempo changes, but we will correct them later. You may enter the count until the end of the song, but you can add more later, so we'll stop here for now. Let's play back the counts you've entered. There are some discrepancies, but we have created a count. The click sound of the count can be adjusted with the volume, and it can also be turned off. The count is synchronized with the movement of the model's feet, but if we mute the sound, we don't mind the slight discrepancy. However, if you are distributing the data to your team members in Drill Studio Viewer, you may notice the discrepancy. It's a bit time-consuming, but let's try to correct the counts as much as possible. Click this button to enlarge the subarea for better viewing. Drag to move the counts. Correct the counts that are out of alignment with the waveform. Repeat playback and stop to check and correct.
Select a count and use this arrow button or the arrow keys on the keyboard to fine-tune the count. Press and hold to move. You don't have to adjust everything. The waveform is easy to see. Correct the counts. Correct the counts and use the equalize button to correct the counts. If too many counts are evenly distributed. If too many counts are evenly distributed, the tempo may fluctuate during the live performance and the counts may not be aligned properly. It is better to select about 8 counts and place them evenly. To insert a missing count, move the timeline bar to the position where you want to insert it. Click the Add Count button. Delete the part of the timeline that has been greatly disturbed, move the timeline forward a little, and re-enter that part of the timeline. You may then re-enter that part of the timeline again. In this way, you can adjust the counts. Let's take a look at some other useful features. The number of divisions that can be set when entering a count is explained below. By increasing this number, you can enter several counts at once with a single tap. The first tap is the first beat, so only one count is created. After that, counts will be created for the number of beats you set. For example, set the number to 4 and tap only the first beat of the measure. Then you can create a count like this. This method is useful when the tempo changes little. In addition, there is a button to add a count by specifying the tempo and the number of counts, and a button to split the time between counts. The button also allows you to add a count by specifying the tempo and the number of counts, and to split a count by a specified number of divisions between the counts. This button can be used to move all sheets and counts after the current timeline. Counts can be moved together. When you have finished entering the counts, you can set the measure settings. Rewind to the beginning and select the first beat of the song. Click on the measure set button. This song has four beats, so set it to four. Leave the number of measures at 500. You may count the number of measures and enter the correct number, though. Since the settings are made in order from the front, the result will always be the same even if you always enter 500. Setting the number of measures helps when modifying some of them later. You can set the foot to start the first step. In this case, we will choose to start with the left foot. If you want to start with the right foot for the sake of convenience, for example, when playing in odd time signatures, or if you want to return to the left foot, etc. If you want to return to the left foot again, for example, in case of a change of beat, etc., you can set this option. If not specified, the right foot and left foot may change depending on the playback situation at that time. Now, click the Set button. The first beat is now displayed in green. Let's play it back. You can see that the click sound on the first beat of the bar has changed. For example, if you want to change from this count to 3 beats per measure, select the count, set the number of beats per measure to 3, and press the set button. Then the beat is now 3 beats per measure. If you want to change it back to 4 beats per measure, select that count, set the number of beats per measure to 4, and press the set button. The measure setting is now complete. 
When the measure settings have been made, the number of measures in beats will be calculated automatically. Since there is only one sheet, the number is zero, but if you add more sheets, the exact number will be displayed. We will go over how to add a sheet in detail in another lesson, but let's try adding a sheet to see the effect of the measure setting. Sheets are placed between counts. The first sheet will be placed between count zero and count one. Sheet zero and count zero cannot be moved, so they will be placed in this position. Since the width of the count is too large, another count is placed between count zero and count one. This will allow the normal action to take place. If the sound source has a lot of blank spaces before the song starts, this is the recommended setting. Add another sheet on beat 8. Then you will see that the bar and count numbers are automatically calculated. If you move the sheet to beat 16, you will see that the bar and count numbers are automatically recalculated. By setting up measures in this way, counts and beats can be calculated accurately. This information can also be automatically notated on the sheet by entering tags. This is a bit time consuming, but it will improve the efficiency of your work later. It is recommended that you start with an accurate count and bar setup. This concludes the lesson on inputting counts. Thank you very much.